Have you ever felt voiceless? Have you ever felt powerless as a student because of your racial or gender identity? One day, I was in the writing center. I was talking to a tutor, to a tutor, to a tutor in the writing center who didn't show much emotions, empathy, or care for me in an individualistic level. I was tutored by him in multiple sessions. However, I started to observe the boundaries surrounding our sessions. It seems that like our racial identities were doing a different talk, an unspoken talk, a talk of race, gender, and power. Race, gender, and power, and linguistic status are not only labels. These are boundaries used to assemble people with specific body markers under different categories. White, Asian, Middle Eastern, African American, Hispanic, non-native speaker of English, native speaker of English, a person of color. Racial categorizations are not only labels. These are identity markers that signifies political and social conflicts by referring to different types of human bodies. Race is an identity marker that cannot be overlooked or erased. Labels with racial indications are not only labels, but a hierarchy constructed by specific linguistic choices very intentional linguistic choices that creates a hierarchy among people. Labels such as mainstream students used to describe white students and minority students used to describe students of colors are not only labels. These are not only labels. These are social ideologies that categorize the mainstream students as normal students and the minority students as strangers rather than different in their own ways. Labels with racial categorizations are not only labels. They create invisible boundaries and an imaginary linguistic and racial identity that eliminate internal differences among our students and fails to account for the multifaceted identities of multilingual students or the so-called minority students. As I didn't... As I didn't feel the emotional support or authentic drive of the tutor support, to support my academic success, I decided that I wanted to be a tutor. I wanted to be a writing tutor who can support students emotionally. I wanted to give the students the emotional support that they needed to support their academic success. I decided to be a tutor in order to show empathy and care for students. All students with all different races and needs. In the process of applying to the writing center, I started to question every aspect of my life. My biases, the social perception of my identity, my privileges, my marginalizations, I started to question the intersection between my marginalizations and privileges. I am privileged. I am a PhD student. I am a researcher. I'm a scientist. However, I am marginalized. I am a Middle Eastern woman of color. I, I applied to the writing center to be a writing tutor. And Dr. Ben Rafith emailed me back to send my writing sample. 
I went to one of the English faculty and asked her, I applied to be a tutor in the writing center. Do you think Dr. Rayford is going to recruit me? She said, I don't know, but Ben is quite selective. So I was like, I'm going to send my writing sample anyway. So I sent my writing sample and bought his book, read every single page in the book, and went to him asking for a signature. His signature was, welcome to the writing center as a writing tutor. I was the first ever Saudi multilingual tutor in that writing center. I started working as a writing tutor in the writing center. So many things start growing. My authenticity, my voice, my privileges, the ways through which I construct and perceive my linguistic and racial identities. One day, a student who shares my first language approached the writing center, asking for help with one of her papers. The receptionist told her, Nov is going to help you. I looked at her, but didn't say a single word. That, uh, that was our first ever meeting. She doesn't know who I am. She doesn't know my educational background. She doesn't know my history as a writing tutor. She doesn't know my history as a researcher. She can only see my gender, my color, and my race. She said, no. She refused my tutoring session. She refused my tutoring session. While I cannot make a claim about her perception of my racial identity as a tutor, this student was actually willing to work with a speaker constructed in her brain as native. At that moment, I realized that I'm trapped into multiple layers of labels, labeling and categorizations. At that moment, I realized that my racial identity functioned as a performative act that receives an action. It actually received a rejection. So my race was acting for me. My race was my performance. Her reaction is something that I perceive as an underestimation of my linguistic competence and intellectual capabilities. I went to the director of the writing center. I told her I was crying, so she looked at me and she said, no, don't cry. This is real life. Don't cry about it. Write about it. So she asked me to write about my experience. She asked me to go home and write about this very disempowering experience. At that moment, a new theory was born. Race as a performative rhetoric. That was my theory. The drive for that theory is that my determination to resist all of these layers of categorizations. I am not a label. I am not a label. I am not a woman of color. I am a woman of power. I wrote a scientific article about race as a performative rhetoric that won the, school, the Scholar for the Dream Award in 2019 from the Association of English Teachers and the English uh, Department. And I also won the, the award from the English Department as the best teacher as well, as a best, a best faculty in the English Department. When I won the award, the Scholar for the Dream Award, Dr. Rafith, this is the same person who signed my book, he sent me an email saying, Thank you for making us proud. So 
so my message to, to you fellow educators, give your students a voice. Make sure that they are giving the voice and space to construct their identities and to construct their racial and linguistic and cultural differences. Design assignments that reflect the very specific cultural and linguistic backgrounds of your students. Talk about emotions with your students. Have the courage to talk about race with your students. Be emotional with your students. Thank you for listening to my story.